They're the St. Louis couple who went viral after they were caught on camera brandishing guns while protesters or rioters marched by their St. Louis home. Mark and Patricia McCloskey were also speakers this week at the RNC and join me now. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, I want to go through that, that, that night for our audience. This is a different audience than cable. This is broadcast across the country right now. We saw it. We saw the two of you on your front lawn. Um, Patricia, let me start with you. Tell, tell me what it took to get you out on your front lawn holding a firearm, what was it? What was your fear like to just explain your emotions at the time? Well, you have to have the background that St. Louis had been burning and being looted since um, for a month, since the day after the death. Um, and so we had been burned and looted. The downtown had been burned and looted. Uh, we watched it constantly on our TV. We went downtown and we were shocked at how much was boarded up. We are two blocks, three blocks away from the nice uh, little area where you have little shops and restaurants and that area got also attacked days before this event it was also boarded up you couldn't go there anymore and then we got news that, that they were coming to not necessarily our street but but our street should be aware that there were going to be more protests and um, to be aware of them then that was supposed to be on Friday in fact they came on a Sunday afternoon and uh, when we didn't know it was going to happen at all, we heard a big commotion in the street, a big six-lane street that's uh, blocked off. That we're in a gated private community. We own our own streets. We own the gate. We own the walls. We own the, the sidewalks and uh, the parking area, the, the, the park that's inside that area. Yep. And yep. they, all of a sudden, we heard a lot of noise from hundreds of people. Um, there didn't seem to be any police associated with it. We were out on our porch just grilling, and suddenly they, there was there were people at the a gate. It's an iron gate. That right, is right. Long. So, so I apologize. I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Mark, tell me, tell us what you know. At what point did you say, "Honey, let's go get our firearms"? And you know, that's a big step to take. You know, you, you, there's one calling cops, there's one locking your doors and getting inside, but another one to, to take your gun. What was what were you thinking? You know. In the real world, there wasn't really time to think. It was just a, a kind of a spontaneous reaction. When the crowd breached the gate, and we're talking hundreds of people coming in, falling over each other, uh, folding the gate down, and then, then climbing over it and, and really coming in in moss, um, I just ran into the house, got the rifle, came out. Patty went out, uh, went inside to call 911, and uh, next thing I know, there she is out in the front yard with a with his pistol, which which had been rendered inoperable in the past and, and was at the time. And, uh, and I'm standing up on the edge of the porch with now no clean line of fire and she's surrounded and it was, it was uh, harrowing, but it was, it was certainly not a matter of thinking, hey, should we make a decision to, uh, to go inside and lock the doors? I mean, it was instantaneous. We've got to do this now or our house will be burned. We will be killed and that's the end of us. You know, I, I, I think uh, there are, oh probably millions of Americans watching going, what would I do in that position? Some would do the same thing you did. Some would do what you, you described earlier. Mark, uh, first you, were, were you prepared to pull the trigger if, if need be? Well, you know, at, at some point, one of the people that was wearing body armor and was intentionally being menacing was getting closer and closer up the stairs towards us. And, and I leaned over to Patty and I said, look, if that guy moves any closer, I'm going to have to kill him. And I took the safety off her rifle. I was ready to do it. Uh, but she says, you're not killing anybody today. And I, I didn't. I mean, no shots were fired. It had the desired effect. Yeah. The crowd stayed at bay. Nobody got hurt. Nothing got broken except the gate. No, no paint was even spray painted. Um, the, uh, the Second Amendment did its trick. We displayed our weapons. People realized we were serious. They backed off. No doubt. And no no, no doubt the second, that's what it's for, to protect one's uh, private home, their family. Patricia, only about 30 seconds, so keep it tight here if you don't mind. Um, have you been, what, what's the aftermath? Have you been threatened or are you getting a lot of support? Um, we've gotten a lot of support. Uh, after the convention yesterday, we had lots of threats. We had constant threats at the office, constant phone ringing, hanging up. Um, but then we actually had to get the the FBI and the police involved, and they're looking into these people because they were actual credible threats of. All right. well, we're going to yeah. leave it right there. Mark and Patricia McCloskey, the St. Louis couple who defended their property with firearms. Thank you for your time.
Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks, Eric.